The greater one-horned rhinoceros, Asia's armor-plated giant, is one of the rarest creatures on Earth. Fierce and prehistoric in appearance, the greater one-horned has an intriguing lifestyle. This is the story of how a complex animal survives in an unpredictable world. Kaziranga National Park is a magical, watery wilderness in India's far east. Its swampy grasslands are a haven for wildlife, a refuge from the world of humans. Herds of animals graze on Kaziranga's fertile plains, refreshed every year by the floods. 70% of the surviving greater one-horned rhinos on the planet live here. It's the perfect hideaway for these remarkable giants. In February, Assam is cool and damp. Overcast skies block out the sun for weeks on end. A new calf, Kishan, has just been born. Up on her feet within hours of birth, she immediately teases her mother, Jamna. Baby rhinos are playful and affectionate. Mother and daughter are building a close relationship already. It's the strongest bond Kishan will have in her lifetime. Mothers and babies stay together for three years until a new baby is born. Kaziranga is home to families of Asia's other giants, the elephant. Rhinos keep a wary distance. There's no need to provoke a confrontation. Both species are dependent on Kaziranga's plentiful water for survival. Although living as neighbors, these gray, tough-hided animals lead very different lives, taking care to avoid a clash. The mighty Brahmaputra River flows down from the foothills of the Himalayas. It forms the northern boundary of Kaziranga. The moods of this god of rivers govern the lives of the extraordinary animals that reside here. The rhinos make its lush banks their playground for most of the year, but when the rains come, they can be its victims. Rich grazing along the floodplain often brings many animals into close proximity, which can be difficult for adult rhino who prefer solitude. Adolescents are relatively tolerant of each other. After leaving their mother's protection, they occasionally seek companionship. Young males have a strong need for solidarity, uniting to protect themselves from aggressive adult bulls. They form wary groups away from the big males. Playful battles occasionally break out between the allies. These jousting matches are fairly harmless, but with two tons of body weight and sharp incisor teeth, greater one-horns can inflict fatal damage. Their armor is more delicate than it appears. It will be at least seven years before these young bulls fight for real, but their mock battles are still significant. By the time they are adults, these youngsters will be divided into two categories, weak and strong. Only the strong will mate, and this bull's comrades seem to bow to his superiority already. Ramu is a strong adult male. He stalks a large area of the floodplain, always keen for a chance to mate. But there are no exclusive territories, and many of the rhinos in Kaziranga move down to the same wallows each day 
to spend hours rolling in the mud and water. Jamna and Kishan join the crowd. Jamna feeds voraciously. She has to satisfy her enormous bulk and also provide milk for her fast-growing calf. The soil here is very rich in nutrients, fertilized by the high concentration of rhino urine and droppings. Rhinos spend many hours in the water. It keeps them cool and wards off irritating insects that manage to pierce their deceptively thin skin. Greater one-horns give birth to only one baby at a time. These two are following one female, but they're not twins. Perhaps one belonged to a relative. The extra responsibility is an additional burden for the mother. Adoption is very rare in the animal kingdom, but these two youngsters are inseparable. Kishan also grabs the opportunity to play. For once, her mother isn't concentrating on food. Adult rhinos are never as playful as babies, but Jamna indulges her tiny calf for the moment. Eventually, even Kishan tires, to the relief of her reserved and anxious mother. Older calves aren't tolerated to the same extent. They are weaned after a year, after which their mothers gradually lose interest in them. This one-year-old is learning to cope with rejection. Its mother's patience is running short. Sometimes, old females are more tolerant. By licking each other's drying skin, they pick up concentrated minerals left by the urine-polluted water. Only females indulge in this almost intimate activity. Males always bathe alone. Adult bulls are moody and solitary. Elephants also like water, but they avoid the urine-polluted wallows of the rhinos, and unlike the rhinos, they travel to the water together as a large extended family. They are led by an old female, the matriarch. Their babies snuggle safely between the bodies of the whole family. They all cooperate to bring the babies up. Youngsters shelter behind the walls of the thick legs of their older relatives. Like the rhino calf, elephant young are vulnerable to attack by tiger. With protection like this, there is little danger. Unlike the rhino, these adults are too big to immerse themselves. A mud bath will suffice. But this tiny calf can't yet maneuver its trunk to copy the adults. With their long legs and wide feet, elephants are superbly adapted to the watery world of Kaziranga and happily wade across rivers and swamps on their daily travels. They journey from the pools to the surrounding hills in search of food, often beyond Kaziranga's boundaries. These calves will learn the roots from their herd elders. Their strong family bonds not only offer them protection, but survival law. Elephants thrive on long, tough grass. It's easier to grasp in their trunks than the short shoots the rhinos favor. The elephants also have favored grazing areas and family members meet up here. 
By whisking the uprooted tufts of grass, they managed to shake off much of the soil. When elephant families meet up like this, old relationships are remembered. Most share fond memories and renew their bonds by touch. Like the adolescent rhino bulls, the young males are boisterous, preferring jousting to eating. The elephant calf snatches another chance to suckle its mother's rich milk. It will not be weaned for three or four years and will grow rapidly. In just six years, its weight will increase tenfold. Baby rhino also suckles greedily, but Jamna's milk is very thin and will not satisfy Kishan's needs for long. Unlike the elephant calf, which gets everything she needs from her mother, Kishan has to learn to supplement her diet. She gets many of her minerals by eating mud around the wallow. Mother isn't far away keeping a wary eye out for her. Rhino eat dung as well as mud. The prehensile lip of the greater one-horned is ideal for manipulating this food. The fact that the lip can be folded away makes this species the most adaptable of all rhinos but they have to be selective. Youngsters learn exactly what to eat by copying their mothers. The flexible lip allows the greater one horn to graze flat swathes of grass and browse on low vegetation. By the time Kishan reaches adulthood, she'll be devouring 200 pounds of fodder every day. But lush-looking palm fronds are not on the menu. Sharp thorns defend these against Kaziranga's herbivores. As the year advances, the grass begins to run out and temperatures soar. The rhinos turn their attention to the rafts of water hyacinth that build up in Kaziranga's pools. This invasive plant was introduced by man some years ago and now chokes the still water. Although the rhinos appear to enjoy it, it is unpalatable and provides little nourishment. Rhinos have to consume huge volumes to satisfy themselves. Kaziranga is becoming increasingly hot and humid. It's the season for fires. Huge swathes of Kaziranga parklands go up in flames. What remains of the drying grass is reduced to ash and cinders. Drongos fly into the heat of the flame, hawking for escaping insects. In a few days, the fires are over. This burning is deliberate. The fires are lit by the park rangers to remove dying vegetation and encourage new growth. Before the ashes are cold, the rhinos move into the burnt patches to eat ash from the ground, licking it from the remaining grass stems. Other animals, such as the nervous swamp deer, join them. Ash is the only addition to their normally exclusive diet of grass. Water buffalo pour into graze on the new shoots, which emerge from the ashes within days.
Kishan has grown fast on her varied diet. She is much calmer now. She has lost a lot of her playfulness and curiosity. A mother nearby is wary of approaching. By exaggerating her size, she keeps Jamna and Kishan at a distance. There is unlikely to be any direct confrontation. Greater one-horned rhinos get their message across in a more subtle way. The dung heap serves as a communal notice board. All the rhinos in the area use the same heap. The calf soon learns the technique. Odors from the dung heap provide information about the status of the rhinos, such as sex and age, and particularly their readiness for breeding. It's also a habitat for many other animals and plants. Even the elephants enjoy the rich vegetation that springs from the piles of dung. Ramu, the strong male, is particularly interested in the information the dung notice board announces. Ever on the lookout for females, his sense of smell is acute, and once he has identified the owner of an attractive scent, he will track her down. A powerful jet of urine signals that he is definitely one of Kaziranga's dominant males. His range will overlap with that of other big bulls, but usually their urine markers help them to avoid each other. Tasting the air, he anxiously seeks out the receptive female he picked out at the dung heap. He needs to be first to track her down. It's time to set off in pursuit, literally following his nose. Another male is on the scent trail, intent on the same purpose. They know each other from battles past. There is no need for confrontation. But a third male has turned up, a stranger. He is a more serious contender. Ramu will have to prove himself. The battle starts in earnest. The greater one-horned rhino is the only species of rhino to have retained its incisor teeth. They use them to jab open-mouthed at their opponents. These sharp incisors can inflict serious damage. The horn is almost useless. The battle can go on for hours, a series of threats and withdrawals, as each bull tries to find a chink in the other's armor. The plate-like loose neck folds are the most important part of a rhino's livery, protecting the soft part of the throat. These fights appear to take place in slow motion, like much of the rhino's life. But the outcome can be fatal. A single wound can easily become infected and leave the mighty beast defenseless. A jungle crow cleans up the wound. It's a miserable wound. He takes some flesh too. Its suffering is obvious. The crow is insistent. He even uses the back of the demoralized giant to clean his beak. Meanwhile, Ramu, the conqueror, has found the receptive female. The mating game is not over. 
she sets off on a marathon. He must run after her for miles to prove his strength and his worthiness to be the father of her calf. Already exhausted by his battle, he must keep up and also ward off any other males who are attracted by her display. His stamina wins through eventually. Fortunately for him, she has drawn him into long grass, where he's hidden from his rivals. But even now, she doesn't seem wholly convinced. After all, he weighs over two tons, and the rhino was not designed for copulation. Nonetheless, this balancing act will last hours. Not all matings at Kaziranga are as tortuous. A female hog deer has also come into season. The buck is just as persistent as the rhino bull, but his courtship is rather less exhausting. And the finale is surprisingly brief. For most of the rhinos, the days stretch out with little to mark their passing. But in April, the wind turns, signalling a change in the weather. The monsoon has arrived. This rain will turn the Brahmaputra River into an unpredictable torrent, threatening the rhino's tranquil existence. Within days, the feeding pastures are submerged. All the animals must search for higher ground. The mighty Brahmaputra has burst its banks and is submerging Kaziranga. Rhinos are in real danger of being swept away by the rapid flow of the river. Otters take the swelling floodwaters in their stride. Unless the flood subsides quickly, the surviving rhinos will starve to death. Kishan struggles to keep up with Jamna. Greater one-horns are excellent swimmers, but the unpredictability of the flood makes them vulnerable. Kaziranga's residents are forced right to the edge of the park, where poachers watch for any opportunity to kill an isolated animal. Brief annual floods are normal, and rejuvenate the park. But some years, the flood waters linger for months. By the time the skies clear and the waters recede, the cost of the monsoon is apparent. Thousands of animals have died. There are winners, too. Unlike the rhinos, the elephants have survived the monsoon unscathed. They simply lift out the sunken grass with their trunks. Even the calves have learned trunk control.
Jamna has made it again this season. She too has chosen to mate with a strong male ramu. The couple stay together several days after mating, a rare period of companionship for these solitary giants. In 16 months' time, Jamna will have another calf, as playful and outgoing as Kishan once was. Kishan managed to survive her first major monsoon. Now completely parted from her mother, she must learn to live alone. It'll be nearly two years before she'll be ready to mate. Until then, she will live a life of satisfied solitude. <laughs>